God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy One is in our midst. O oh, come, let us worship. I invite you to say with me now the Invitatory, Psalm 67, verses 1 through 5. O oh God, be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of your countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Please also join me in saying the gradual psalm together. <clears throat> Sing to God a new song. Sing to God all the whole earth. Sing and bless God's holy name. Proclaim the good news of salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations, God's wonders among all peoples. For God is great and greatly to be praised more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but it is God who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of God's presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of God's sanctuary. Ascribe to God, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to God honor and, and power. Ascribe due honor to God's holy name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts. Worship the Most High in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before God. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, 
who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. And now please join me on page four uh, to recite our canticle together. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By divine mercy, we have a new birth into a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we have an inheritance that is imperishable in heaven. The ransom that was paid to free us was not paid in silver or gold, but in the precious blood of Christ, the lamb without spot or stain. God raised Jesus from the dead and gave him glory so that we might have faith and hope in God. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I heard both good news and bad news in today's lessons. For me, the good news is that God moves through history. The bad news is that history is so messy that sometimes it can be hard to figure out just what God is doing. The reading from Isaiah declares the good news about how the Holy One of Israel moves far beyond the borders of any one country. The prophet says that God is using a foreign emperor to free the Hebrews from the Babylonian captivity and to authorize the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. The passage from Isaiah points to the actions by the Holy One for far beyond a single Hebrew nation to impact the known world. Cyrus is a Gentile monarch of a foreign empire and is being claimed as the anointed of the Holy One. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, begins the present passage. The Hebrew word for anointed is Messiah, Messiah. The kings of Israel and Judah were anointed. 
but so is this Gentile emperor. Isaiah declares that the hidden treasures of conquered nations will be given to Cyrus as he overcomes the Babylonians and others. As Professor Christopher Hayes observes, there are three reasons given for the Lord's extravagance towards, towards Cyrus. First, is so that Cyrus may know that the Lord is the agent of his success. Second, in a parallel construction, it is also for the sake of my servant Jacob and for Israel, whose exile is ending. Third, it is so that they, meaning people everywhere, may know that there is none beside me. So the subsequent pairings of east and west, of light and darkness, of weal and woe, are all ways to emphasize the completeness of the Lord's power. But please notice that the prophet tells us twice that although he is an instrument of God, Cyrus does not know the Lord. Cyrus fulfills his mission by conquering Babylon and sending the exiles home, but he disappears from the text shortly after this passage. In the biblical tradition, an anointed king was not supposed to aggrandize himself at the people's expense, but rather to ensure justice for the powerless. By those standards, Cyrus was a failed messiah. So we clearly cannot assume that might is right, that the Assyrian Empire, for example, was any better or worse than the Roman Empire. And today's gospel makes me aware of just how messy politics and history can be. The context for today's encounter is that Jesus had entered Jerusalem in triumph, greeted as heir to the throne of David just that week. He physically cleared the temple and taught for days about the reign of God, the kingdom of God, the economy of God. And then today, we have an unexpected alliance of two opposing political factions who agree to try to trap Jesus with questions about paying taxes. The delegation is composed of Pharisees who oppose the Roman Empire and Herodians who collaborated with Rome to make, maintain their own political and economic power. First, there are smarmy compliments and then a trick question. And it's important to remember some of the details about imperial taxes at this time. Taxes were a powerful tool of the Roman conquest of many nations. Tax collectors purchased the right to collect taxes. They became personally liable for the tax owed by their area, but they could keep anything over what was owed to Rome that they had collected. So this delegation asked Jesus, is it legal? under Jewish law? Can they undercut his authority as a rabbi? Will he be able to answer from the scriptures? Will Jesus oppose the legal power of Rome to collect taxes? Or will he lose the loyalty of the Jews who have just declared him the heir of the, king of the kingdom of David? Instead of answering, Jesus asked him to show him a denarius. He is being very tricky. You had to use Roman coinage to pay the Roman taxes. It was also what was used to pay Roman soldiers, officials, and suppliers. The denarius had the face of the emperor on it, and the emperors were claiming to be divine. So the image was an idol, a false god. Jesus has demonstrated by his question that his questioners themselves have brought a profane item into the temple. Jesus asks them whose image and likeness it is. And he's using the same word for image that is in the second commandment about not worshiping the graven images of idols. And the, the questioners must admit it is the image of Caesar. Render to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's, Jesus replies. The coin used to pay taxes were definitely Caesar's. But what is God's? It can be easy to think that God worries only about the people and the nations that we worry about. But God's view and reach is so much bigger. There's so many times that the scriptures point to the Lord ruling over all the world. Creating all that is, breathing creation out of chaos. 
sending a flood that devastated the world and then setting a rainbow in the sky as a promise of mercy to all the earth. Promising to bless the world through the chosen people and asking for our exclusive love and worship in the Ten Commandments. So much of the Hebrew and Christian scriptures is about how the Holy One moves in and through history in relationships with clans, with judges, with monarchs, with prophets, poets, strangers, immigrants, slaves, and even us Gentiles. Today's psalm reminds us to take this wider and joyous view of God's reign. The whole earth is to sing to the Holy One. As one commentator put it, Psalm 96 should start with timpani and end with a trumpet. It's tied to the Babylonian exile. In the Septuagint translation, this psalm has a subscription that links it directly by saying it should be sung, quote, when the house that it was sing it was sung, quote, when the house was being rebuilt after the captivity. It ties directly to our first lesson. And we are told in the psalm emphatically three times to sing to the Holy One and then to bless God's name. And it's clarif clarified in the parallel line of the verse that to bless is to proclaim the good news of God's salvation from day to day, to say how we have experienced God's grace and how we have seen that grace in the world around us. The next section extols the Holy One in comparison to other deities, other things that claim our loyalty, when it is the creator of heaven and earth who deserves our praise. This psalm also has one of my personal favorite verses. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before God. The beauty of holiness, that speaks to me both of God's beauty and the beauty of worshiping God in song, in prayer, in service to each other, in enjoying and protecting the natural world. Most importantly, Worship is an opportunity to be in relationship with the one who loves us, who created us, one who loves and accompanies us on our confusing journeys, one who embraces challenges and upholds us as no matter what we're going through. I'd like to close with my own reflection on this verse from many years ago, which still holds true. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness with all the saints through all history Offer my heart to the Holy One, no matter how I feel about what my heart contains. Amen. Please join us in singing hymn number 488, Be Thou My Vision, hymn number 488. <laughs>
now please join me on page five of your bulletin for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior, deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation, give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among the nations and your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our lives. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ, you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Abundant God maker of all things new on heaven and on earth. You made us in your image and breathed in us a spirit of generosity that is both gift and response. Move us, we pray, to give as we have received, abundantly, generously, and joyfully, that our common ministry may ever bear witness to your unfailing grace. We offer you these gifts in an act of true faith, in the name of the three in whom we are one. Amen. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives, that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray to our creator through Christ, who is our light and life saying, Christ have mercy. Holy God, your Christ is acclaimed as savior and good shepherd. Look in mercy on your church. For all ministers and for all the people of God, let us pray. Christ, have mercy. Holy God, your Christ, through whom new life came into being 
for our sake emptied himself. Look in mercy on the afflicted, the marginalized, the needy, and the suffering. For our parishioners, relatives, and friends, Jeff, Kamish, Bob, Alexandra, Vicky. And now invite your prayers for those who you love, either silently or aloud. Let us pray, Christ have mercy. Holy God, your Christ is the one in whom faithful servants find their peace. Look in mercy on the departed, that they may share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Fran Ginsburg, Sister Ruth Hall, John Stewart, Maria Revez Eigerman, Jovi Elizarde, Jason Cortez, I invite your prayers for those who have died. Let us pray, Christ have mercy. Holy God, your Christ brings the way of justice to the world and all your creation. For our global concerns, for peace among all nations, clans and tribes, especially for the people of Armenia and Azerbaijan, for those who are suffering from COVID's mental and physical pain and those COVID survivors struggling with rehabilitation. And now invite your prayers for global needs and concerns. Our election, our city and our country. Let us pray. Christ, have mercy. Holy God, your Christ taught us to take joy in earthly pleasures that demonstrate your great love for us. For our thanksgivings for the St. Mary's delegates to the diocesan convention and all leaders of the Episcopal Church. And for other prayers of thanksgiving, you now say silently or aloud. The community of St. Mary's. Let us pray, Christ have mercy. Almighty God, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, amen. Please join me on page eight in reciting together the general thanksgiving. Accept, O God, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation for his dying through which he overcame death, for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. This moment we'll have a few short announcements. Uh, greetings, welcome. If you are new or visiting, my name is David Erickson. I'm the rector of St. Mary's Episcopal Church. We are delighted you're here. 
Uh, you can find information on us, uh, more about this faithful community at smvsf.org or email the office at office at smvsf.org. Uh, we'd love to tell you more about how to get involved uh, in this blessed community. Uh, quick highlights from our bulletin. A lot going on, actually, even though we're not physically together, uh, at least at the building. Uh, so please check out it for fullness of details. We have been offering the last couple of weeks and we'll offer this week and next the opportunity to gather for a large group up to 100 people a morning prayer at Chrissy Field. Uh, so check that out. Join us. Consider joining us next week uh, and register for it online. Our worship gatherings of 20 people or less in parks is still going and in widely well received. People are enjoying that interactive experience. So if you are hungry for a, 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 an in-person, although socially distanced and, and safe experience uh, uh, for worship, please check those out as well. You'll find that on the website as well as and a link to our registration uh, page on the website as well. Tomorrow is the last day to sign up for our offering of Sacred Ground, uh, a, an Episcopal uh, curriculum on racial reconciliation. Uh, and it is a tremendous success. We have over 40 people signed up from St. Mary's. We found out at the diocesan convention that there are, I think, over 500 people uh, around the diocese who are about to or have just started this uh, education as well. So if you are interested, uh, you need to sign up by tomorrow. So please look at the bulletin, look at the website, uh, and consider signing up. We still want to offer you the opportunity to assist those who are suffering from the wildfires all around us. Uh, links to give are on the website, or you may simply write a check or make a donation to St. Mary's, but tell us it's for wildfire relief and we will pass it on. There's a delightful video on our website as well uh, of uh, some family activities, uh, things that have been going on. So please check that out. Um, and if you have a video you'd like to share for our next opportunity to share what's going on, uh, there's instructions for that as well. Our Tidings of Comfort and Joy uh, fundraiser that happens this year, that fundraiser is coming. We'll have more details about that later. But the, the grant task force uh, is seeking applications for those grants. So if you know of a, a smaller Episcopal connected nonprofit in the city, please, please, please uh, share with them this very simple uh, application form so that we can support them because uh, that's what God asks us to do. Uh, also, we are uh, in the process currently of trying to faithfully discern uh, the leadership we need at a vestry level for the next three years in this upcoming vestry class. Uh, so if you feel so called to be a, part, uh, a member of, of le the leadership of St. Mary's that really is responsible for the high end visioning and thinking and, and direction, or you know somebody else who would be good for it, please uh, nominate your, yourself or someone else as well. And uh, we are in that season of the year again, where we uh, graciously uh, ask you to faithfully consider continuing or start supporting uh, God's mission and ministry here at St. Mary's through a financial pledge, uh, which is a commitment to the totality of 2021, uh, the, the financial budget here. Uh, we are calling it Hope and the Holy Spirit, uh, how we are hoping and, and are aware that the Holy Spirit is carrying us through this crazy time. And to share why they uh, continue to give and support and are part of St. Mary's, I now have a very brief video to share with you from Hal Cranston and Vicki Baker. So let me turn off my screen and do that. Hi, I'm Hal Cranston and this is my wife, Vicki Baker. We hope that you're staying safe and being healthy during this time of the coronavirus. We miss you very much, and we miss being at St. Mary's, as I'm sure you do as well. We've been asked to say a few words about the annual pledge that we're in the middle of at this point in time. We, like you, I'm sure we miss everything about St. Mary's. We miss the services, the music, the programs, church school, everything about St. Mary's, particularly outreach, which we feel is very important, not just within our community, but beyond. We understand that if we want to continue to enjoy the blessings and benefits from God, we need St. Mary's. We need to support St. Mary's, not only with our actions, which are very important, but we also need to support St. Mary's with a monetary pledge. If we support St. Mary's with that pledge, we can continue to enjoy St. Mary's helping us to live our lives as Christians and helping those in need. 
That's why we're making a pledge for the coming year, and we hope that you will join us as well. Blessings to you, and peace be with you. Do you all still hear that video? I can. I need to stop. I need to. I need to turn it off. Okay. Only hear you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, technological glitch. All right. Well, so I want to thank Hal and Vicky for their support and their willingness to share with us uh, why they are continuing to support St. Mary's. We invite you to pledge. Uh, hopefully, you got a pledge card in the mail. You can do it online. You can send an email to our finance uh, department. But again, thank you for considering to faithfully uh, and meaningfully support St. Mary's uh, in this strange time. And join us for coffee hour afterwards, right after this service. Uh, and with that, we'll continue with our service on page nine. Thank you for joining us today in worship. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. God, from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.